Hey guys, Adam here with AmericanMuscle.com and today we're taking a quick look at and installing the Eibach Sportline Lowering Springs available for your 2008 and newer Challenger, excluding the Hellcat and Demon models. Now if you're in the market for a set of lowering springs, you're looking to drop the height on your 08 to 19 Challenger, the Eibach Springs are a fan favorite. The Sportline's lower your Challenger up to 2.1 inches, making it one of the bigger drops in the category for just a set of solid lowering springs without moving in to a set of coilovers. Now, as you can see, this significantly changed the exterior appearance and ride height look of our 2013 RT right behind me here, and it looks badass to say the least. But it's not all appearance changes when it comes to lowering springs. Lowering your Challenger is going to help with cornering abilities, suspension and handling feel, performance on the track, and of course, the progressive springs are going to be a lot more comfortable on the road, balls progressively getting sportier and tensing up under heavy loads like launching your Challenger on the track and taking those corners at higher rates of speed. These are a better performing spring than the factory ones with a nice progressive spring rate as opposed to the linear. Now for the guys out there doing a lot of drag racing who want a more consistent and a more predictable spring rate, you might want to look into a set of linears, but this sport line here is going to be a perfect progressive spring for the daily driver or the weekend warrior. This is perfect for both road and track, very fitting for the RT from the Challenger, and I definitely do like the appearance of the ride height. It has a little bit of rake. It does go a little bit lower in the front, of course, than the rear, as you can see, but that is to be expected. It's the same thing from the factory. 2.1 inches in all four corners. There are other staggered lowering springs on the market that'll lower you a little bit more in the front, a little bit less in the rear, vice versa, so it really all comes down to personal preference as for ride height. Now, if you're looking for something affordable, lowering springs across the category don't really stray too much from a set price tag, somewhere around 260 bucks, give or take, depending on the brand. The Eibach ones here do have a high tensile steel, which is just exactly the same as that OEM spring. Not much construction difference when it comes to lowering springs. All that will really change is the spring rate for the most part. Now, this one does have that red powder coated finish. Of course, doesn't affect performance at all. That is an Eibach trademark, and we'll take a closer look at that sitting next to our factory spring, that black spring, once we're in the middle of that installation. We'll take a look at that when I get those rear springs out, and I'll show you guys that whole process in just a little bit. That red powder coating is also going to help with corrosion and rust resistance, which of course is everything you'd want in a spring. Now, as far as the installation, you can expect this to be bordering on three out of three wrenches on our difficulty meter. And the reason being is because you do need to have a spring compressor on deck, which requires some mechanical skills and requires precaution because it can be very dangerous. If you're not comfortable tackling this yourself, guys, there's no shame handing it over to a professional if you have a local shop that you trust a lot to get this done properly. It can be risky and it can be pretty challenging at times. You wanna have patience and you wanna have some mechanical skills on deck. At least have a helping hand if you haven't tackled this before it yourself. With that said, three out of three wrenches, I am gonna say this one's gonna be taking at least six hours, especially if you're working on the ground. If you have a lift like we do and some pole jacks, it can be a little bit easier. Again, I'll take you through step by step. You wanna have some basic hand tools on deck as well as maybe a couple of pry bars, jack stands, floor jacks, hydraulic jack, all of those things will come in handy and I'll show you guys some of those tools as we go through. So what do you say we just get to it? The tools used in this install include a 3 8 impact gun, variety of extensions, 13 millimeter deep socket, 15 millimeter deep end short socket, 18 millimeter deep end short socket for the 3 8 gun, 15, 18, 21, and 22 millimeter deep sockets for a half inch air gun, 10 millimeter, 15 millimeter, and 18 millimeter wrenches, hammer, flathead screwdriver, pry bar, and a bungee cord. Guys, the whole first step of this process is just gonna be removing your wheels. Now, before you do so, we're using a lift, but if you're working on the ground, make sure you have the hydraulic jack on deck as well as several jack stands properly supporting the weight of your vehicle. That is absolutely crucially important while going through this entire process. Make sure your vehicle is supported properly. Once that's out of the way, you have that taken care of, I'm gonna use air tools to pop our lugs off and get our wheels out of the way. Of course, if you have a lug wrench, that works too. Break that out, get all five of those lugs out of the way, pop your wheels off, and we'll move forward. Next step is to remove our factory nut on our sway bar end link, holding that to the strut itself. Now, if this gives you trouble, PB Blaster is gonna be your friend. Have a 21 millimeter socket on deck, and a pry bar could also work if you need to wedge something in there to get it to stop spinning. Just 
pull that out of place and droop that off to the side. Now what I like to do is while I have that disconnected so I don't lose that factory nut, I'll just thread that on by hand just so we know where that's at. Now our next couple of steps do require us to support the weight of this assembly here. So what we're gonna do is lower our car down on the lift down to our jack stand. We've got it raised up just a decent amount with this little block of wood here to support this weight. All right, now that we have this whole thing supported with the weight on the jack stand, it's just lightly on there so that once we disconnect everything and it starts to droop down, we're not letting it hang too far. We wanna have that weight supported. The next step before we grab any more sockets, we're gonna disconnect this wheel speed sensor cable from the clip bracket on our brake cable from the chassis. We've got that disconnected. We don't wanna put too much strain on that. So having that loose with a little bit more flex is what we want. Now we can grab an 18 millimeter socket and our impact gun or a ratchet if that's what you're working with and disconnect the bolt holding our strut to the spindle. Our next step is our upper control arm. Now what we're gonna do is remove this 18 millimeter nut on the stud, back that out just so it's even with the bottom of this stud itself. That way we can still just knock this loose without it popping off completely. We're gonna loosen this enough to get the ball joint inside of our knuckle loosened. Now I'm gonna grab my 18 mil. Back that off nice and lightly. Get that still on, but loose enough that this can get dislodged. Now we're gonna grab a mallet or a hammer, whatever you have handy, and start knocking off against this control arm. Once that's dislodged, we can continue removing that nut. All right, now as you can see, this is completely disconnected, but one thing we don't want is just putting so much pressure on that brake line. That can be detrimental, we don't want that to happen. So grab a bungee cord, a rope, something like that that you can use to secure this back so it doesn't put as much pressure on it. What I like to do, just hook that around, wrap it around a few times, and we can go all the way back here and just find somewhere that this can hook onto so that it's not putting all that pressure on the brake line. It can definitely go straight back to the frame. Next up, you wanna go underneath your hood, make sure that's popped open. We're gonna go to our strut tower. You wanna Twist off the strut tower covers on the top of that strut and set that aside on the cowl or on your reservoir. Grab a 13 millimeter deep socket and you're gonna remove the three 13 millimeter nuts holding on the top of that strut. Now, when you do remove those, your strut is gonna be completely free because we disconnected the bottom. So make sure you have a hand on that to grab it so it doesn't fall through. And we got one off. Make sure you don't drop that in the engine bay. Number two. And that, that third one's gonna come off and the strut's gonna be loose. So keep in mind that it's gonna pop down. Now it should rest on the control arm before it comes down and you might need to flex that downward. Room to pull this out, watch the paint, and you're free. Now we're over here by our spring compressor, but before we can get to that, we're gonna have to take off our isolator and spacer at the top of our strut hat. Now that comes off just by hand. You can tilt that upside down to get that washer out of place. That gives you access to the nut. If you remember, this coming through our strut tower under the hood had that spacer or that cover over top of it. Once we unscrewed that, this rubber isolator prevents that metal from contacting this metal and giving you a knocking sound. So that's why we have this. So you wanna retain this. Once we put our new spring on our strut, we're gonna to wanna to put this back so we can prevent any knocking between metal on metal contact with that cover. So just set this aside for now. 
All right guys, at this point here, we're working on our spring compressor. We've got it set up in place. Now, if you don't have one mounted to the wall like we do here in our shop and you have one of those manual ones that you're working on on the ground, just exercise extreme caution. If you don't have familiarity with your spring compressor, take it to a shop, get done properly. This can be extremely dangerous. These springs are bolted down on the strut under heavy load. So if this were to release without proper security, it can shoot off and be pretty detrimental. So just exercise extreme caution while doing this. We've got it set up here. I'm gonna crank down on this, relieve some of that pressure. The reason we're doing this is to condense that spring, relieve pressure from that top head. We'll go in with our 18 millimeter deep socket and remove that nut and then slowly decompress so we can pull that top hat off safely. So that's the goal here. That's what we're gonna do. I've got this set up, so I'm gonna slowly work my way down and just relieve some of that pressure. You wanna compress that spring enough so that it gets that pressure off of that nut. Now we can decompress that spring, remove our top hat, swap them out with the Eibach ones and do it all in reverse order. All right, once that's taken care of, push those back, get the spring out of here. We're gonna remove that top hat. The whole bump stop's gonna come with us. Now, as you can see, the isolator on the bottom of our strut is gonna stay in place and it's gonna be a good seat for the new spring. As you can see, that coil is gonna rest right up against that edge. Top hat's gonna go on next. Feed that whole assembly straight through. And the same thing's gonna happen up here. You can see that this is a stopped end. That's gonna go right against the side of our coil. Press that down, get them to seat. And that's gonna be where that sits. Now that we have our strut head back on, the spring is short enough that we can get this nut on by threading it down by hand. We're just gonna push down, get threading to show through. Just tighten this down by hand. That'll hold this in place while we get it back on the compressor. All right, now that we have this set back up, we can compress that spring again. We're gonna break out that 18 millimeter socket and our impact gun, tighten up this nut to spec, and then it will be good to get it off the spring compressor, back in the vehicle, and reassemble everything. Now, when you're decompressing that, you wanna make sure the spring seats in that isolator properly, just like I showed you. Have the end of that coil up against the edge of that isolator, and then you can decompress. Perfect. Just like I said, right up against that edge, same thing on the top. Now we're good to go right back in the vehicle. Now before we do anything, of course, you have that rubber isolator and that metal washer. You wanna make sure you're putting those back into place. The washer's gonna go first, and that rubber one's gonna come second. Give you a little resistance because of the threading on that stud, but just push it all the way down as far as you can and now we're good to go back in. Remember, that's gonna keep that contact free from metal on metal when we put that cap back on the top. So, at this point. All right, now we can thread on those top 13 millimeter nuts by hand just to hold it in place. Once we have it bolted down the bottom, we'll come back up and tighten these down. Perfect, those are gonna hold that strut in place. We can go down low and get them tightened up. At this point, we wanna seat that strut on the lower bolt location. A pry bar is definitely gonna help get that lined up. There it is. Now grab your socket and tighten that down. All right, now we're gonna get this nice and tight with our 18 millimeter socket. Next up, we're gonna get this bungee out of the way so we can dislodge our entire spindle. Get that up out of the way. Next up is that nut at the top with our upper control arm. Get that nut off. We're gonna thread this on by hand. All right, once you have that threaded on, of course, just grab your socket and tighten it down. All right, next up, you just wanna reconnect that sensor cable onto our brake line bracket. That connects there. And the next step here would be our sway bar end link. Now, as I showed you before, I like to throw that nut back in place. Just remove that, 
you can slide that stud back into the opening on your strut. Thread this down by hand. Grab your socket and tighten that down at 21 mil. Now because tightening this up with your air gun or your impact gun, they, it will cause this whole bearing to spin. If you need to, the last resort can always be to grab a ratcheting wrench or a regular wrench, put it down here, hold the end of this with your regular wrench and just start cranking away. It's gonna take a lot longer, but this, it might be what you need to do if it keeps spinning. All right guys, now we can go back up under the hood, grab your 13 deep socket and tighten up these three nuts and then we'll replace that cover. And this just threads right back on top. Guys, once you have everything tightened down, you wanna make sure you're going back with a torque wrench and torquing all of your bolts down to their proper specifications. Now the top upper control arm bolt we did with air tools, that got really nice and tight. I know that's down to spec, but if you're using hand tools, you wanna to make sure this is down to 50 foot pounds plus a 90 degree turn. The bottom of your shock going straight to that control arm is going to go down to 128 foot pounds. And I have my torque wrench here because we did not use air tools. I know that's not tight enough. I got it set to 128 foot pounds. Typically, you're not really supposed to use an extension on a torque wrench. It can start to lose some of that power, but we otherwise would not be able to reach this bolt. So I'm gonna stick that down there and get this down to 128 foot-pounds. You wanna hear two clicks, ensure that that's at proper spec and you're good to go. Now the top bolts underneath that hood are 30 foot-pounds. All right, now with that entire process taken care of for what you saw to be our driver's side front, what we're gonna do, repeat the exact same process on the other side of the front, then we can get started on the rear. The other side of that front, of course, is gonna be the exact same. So if you guys followed step-by-step step on this side, you'll definitely knock out the other side in no time. All right, kicking off the rear, we're gonna start it off the exact same way we started off the front. Grab your 22 socket, pop off those lugs, get the wheels out of the way. You saw me pop off the rear wheels, so it's time to get started on the rear springs. So you wanna grab a 13 millimeter socket and an extension. What we're actually gonna do is lower down our one exhaust pipe. Now the reason being is to lower down this rear cradle, what we're gonna do is remove this bolt holding it to the back end. But we can't back that bolt out because the tailpipe's in the way. So what we're gonna do to make our lives just a little bit easier here is grab this 13, we're gonna go up, remove the brackets on our hangers that hold the isolators together to the frame. We're gonna remove that bolt, it's a 13 millimeter bolt holding it to the frame, lower down that hanger, then there's another one right on top of the exhaust tip. With those two out of the way, we'll be able to lower down our exhaust tailpipe just enough to clear that bolt, get that backed all the way out. With that in mind, we're also gonna remove the bottom shock bolt. That's holding that to the cradle itself as well. Since we're only doing lowering springs, there's not a whole lot of taking apart that we need to do in order to lower this down enough to get that factory spring out. Keep in mind, our new springs are shorter, so we're not gonna need as much room when it comes to put those in. We just need a little bit of clearance to get the factory one out. If you are doing a little bit more than lowering springs, if you're doing shocks or a sway bar, it's a lot more involved than that. If you're doing shocks, you're gonna do two top bolts as well to pop that out. You might have to lower this down a little bit more to get some clearance to get that out. But of course, we're only doing springs today, so we're only gonna move forward with this bolt here at the bottom of our shock, as well as the bolt holding our cradle to the frame. So, first step, 13 socket, extension, impact gun. Let's pop off those hanger brackets holding it to the frame. Got that one loose, we got one more under the tailpipe tip. All right, this one's a little bit trickier to get to right above our tip but we just have enough clearance to get to it without needing a swivel. You can see that cap back coming down. Just let it hang off. We're gonna put our bolts aside. All right guys, now you can see we have that lowered down. You can see us getting a lot more clearance and now we have enough room to back that bolt out. And of course, if you needed to, you could pull down just a little bit on that back tailpipe to give yourself more clearance, but I think we're good right there as it is. All right, the next step here, I actually wanna get our pole jack out. Now guys, if you remember, we're using a lift here at our shop, but if you're on the ground, hydraulic jack does the trick just as well. You wanna have a pole jack here, we're gonna jack this all the way up just to put a slight bit of tension, take a little bit of tension off of that cradle. 
So we're just barely holding that up. So a little bit of tension, do the same thing with a hydraulic jack if you're working on the ground. When we start removing these bolts, we don't want that cradle to shoot down with all that tension from that spring. So you wanna support that weight. If you're up in the air with a pole jack, that's a good way to go. If you're on the ground, a hydraulic jack will do the trick. Makes it easier to lower it down. All right guys, with that weight supported, you wanna grab an 18 millimeter socket and 15 millimeter wrench and pop off the bottom shock bolt holding it to the cradle. The 18 is gonna go on the nut, 15 is gonna go on the bolt head side on the opposite end. Now if you need to, grab a ball peen hammer, just tap that out to get the bolt to come through the other end. Next up is that bolt on the back end of that cradle. Grab an 18 millimeter wrench to hold the nut side and a 15 millimeter socket to get the bolt head. Make sure at this point you have that weight supported. All right guys, once that bolt's out of the way, we can start lowering down our pole jack ever so slowly. Now, like I said, this is under a lot of tension. You don't wanna get it down too quickly just to unload all that pressure. Go very slowly with your pole jack, and if you're using hydraulic jack, just slowly rotate that handle to get that to lower down. Once you get that nice and loose, you'll see all that pressure comes off. You get a lot of play in that spring. Get your jack out of the way if need be. Make sure you're pulling that isolator out with it. All right, now we can grab our iBox spring. Well guys, we finally got that factory spring out. We have them side by side here and I just wanted to do a quick comparison. As far as what they're made of, not much if anything changes. iBox is still made from a high tensile steel coil, still has the exact same OEM quality as those factory springs. You can expect that to hold up for years to come of course, it has that trademark look, the powder coated red finish on the iBox Sport lines. Comparing that to the factory black finish, this looks a lot better on your suspension, but overall that color is just giving you that corrosion and rust resistance. As you can see, this one is tightly wound at the top. That's gonna be the way that this is going to sit in on your cradle. Being a progressive spring, you can expect this to be, like I said earlier, a lot more comfortable during daily driving. You can sit in traffic, no problem, without it being uncomfortable. But the second it gets under heavy load, taking tight corners or under hard launches, that is going to tense up, feel a lot sportier, compress a lot nicer. It's gonna give you a nice tight suspension feel, um, giving you a high quality ride while still giving you that sporty track feel. It's good for road and track, hence uh, Challenger RT, right? This is what these Challengers were made for. So if you're picking up this, this is gonna be a really good rear end feel and I'm excited to get this installed. One thing we are gonna have to do is transfer over our factory isolators. As you can see, these are in pretty nice condition. Granted, this is a 2013. If you're working with something a little older or if your isolators have seen better days, this is the time to pick up new ones. We're just gonna transfer over our factory ones since these are in pretty good condition, but keep that in mind. You wanna make sure you're not forgetting this. Transfer your isolators over to your new springs before you pop them in, so let's do that now. The top hat is gonna seat right on the top there, and again, just like our fronts, it has that edge. Wrap that in. The rear, same thing. I'm gonna seat this in. Wrap that around the coils straight onto the edge there. This is gonna seat into that factory cradle just like this. Now if that coil starts to come out of that lower isolator, you can just jack the cradle up to get them to sit with a little bit more pressure. Now that we're getting back to bolting up our lower control arm and our cradle back into our subframe, we're running into the problem of it actually pushing the vehicle off the lift a little bit. We hit a point of resistance once we get pretty close to that bolt hole. So in order to avoid this, what we're going to do is lower the car all the way down with all three wheels back on, with the exception of this one. We're gonna lower it down onto a jack stand. We'll use the weight of the vehicle on the jack stand to push up on this lower control arm. So we'll put that jack stand right about here on the cradle and it'll push all the way up and get that lined up. We can also use at that point a hydraulic jack on the ground like a lot of you guys will be using from the start if you're working in the driveway at home. The combination of that jack stand here and the hydraulic jack if we need it would be to put that here and push upward to get those bolt holes to line up. Now before you do start to do this if you are on a lift like we are make sure you bolt at least one bolt back up into the exhaust so it doesn't scrape the ground first. 
Because it's hanging so low, it will come in contact with the ground before anything else does, so just keep that in mind moving forward. Also, if you are going to take this method in order, if you're working on the ground to start with, make sure your jack stands are up high enough to get this job done. So, with that said, let's put a jack stand here. We'll lower this down, but first we got to put all three of our wheels back on, with the exception of this one. Next step is our shock bolt. You can use this flathead screwdriver to get it to line up on the opposite end by sticking that through the hole and just prying upward to get your bolt hole through this end. Grab the nut, thread it on the other side, and we can get our tools and tighten down these two bolts. All right, guys, once you have the bolts through, grab your 15 millimeter deep socket and your 18 millimeter wrench and tighten up the bolt holding that cradle to the subframe. All right, now we can do that shock bolt. Tighten that down with our 13 socket. Just a quick couple of notes before we get going. After you tackle this installation, whether you're doing it yourself or you're taking it to a shop, make sure you're getting your alignment checked or redone simply because anytime you're disconnecting your rear cradle at the rear end or taking your struts out, you are going to mess up that alignment just a hair. It might not be super noticeable at first, but it definitely can take a toll on the suspension, wear out your tires a lot more. So all in all, it's just safer to get the alignment done after the installation is complete. Well guys, that's gonna wrap up my review and install of the iBox Sportline lowering springs available for the 2008 and newer Challenger, excluding the Hellcat and Demon models. You can pick your set of Sportlines up or the Pro Kit from iBox right here at AmericanMuscle.com.